Hello, welcome to Two Saw Acres. This is a follow-up video to the outdoor wood boiler plumbing that I couldn't find examples of, at least on YouTube, uh, from the outdoor wood boiler to a pole barn, in-floor radiant heat, and today to the LP boiler already installed in the house. The house was built on a LP boiler system, heating system for the whole house six zones we're heating approximately 3,000 square feet we've got five zones that feed different rooms throughout the house and then one zone that was initially plumbed in for a uh, water to water uh, domestic hot water over the years the house has been retrofit with a forced air furnace and a electric water heater plumbed in parallel and we generally just keep the boiler water heater valved off so when I wanted to install the wood burning or outdoor wood boiler I had to figure out how to plumb it into the house and I learned real quick it wasn't quite as easy as I was hoping and it seemed like there was nothing anywhere I actually couldn't find this exact video so we're going to go through today how I did this. Remember, I am not a professional plumber. So this video is for entertainment purposes only. However, it did work out great for me. So this system, the actual boiler, boiler system in the house, like I said, six zones. This side here is the return side. The valves, we've got manual ball valves, and then we've got the actual thermostat controlled valves. Return comes down, around through, into the pump, just a little Taco 007, through the, thir or through the uh, slant fin boiler, gets pumped out, up and around, supply manifold, has the pressure tank, it has a feed line right off the domestic side with a check valve, the aerator, or vent, and then into the supply to each of the zones. And I didn't realize that I wasn't going, at least when I started this journey, that the boiler water never comes into contact with the household boiler water. They're two separate systems. So we've got the primary loop, which is the boiler, the outdoor wood boiler. And then we've got the secondary loop, which in its own right is its own primary loop. And this is how I did it. So coming off the outdoor wood boiler, if you saw the first video of the uh, barn plumbing, I mentioned that I had two leaks total. That was these two fittings right here. Let's see if I can get a better shot of this. These two MPT fittings going from the PEX to my inside plumbing, the copper. Jeez, oh, Pete. It's either too bright or not bright enough. And this pink stuff that you're seeing here is just the uh, additive into the outdoor wood boiler water. Anyway, so my supply and return line supplies on the bottom. And since this furnace was installed after the fact, it's a very tight fit back here. And I wa really wanted to solder all these joints in. But there was just no way. I actually soldered a piece together and slap, slipped it behind there, but I couldn't get it to fit all the way from one side to the other. So I ended up going with the shark bites. This is one inch copper feeding the plate exchanger. I installed a boiler valve in line with the return side, and that's actually how I filled the boiler. I just ran that, ran a uh, see that's a washer feed line to the actual domestic water system and just back fed the system I've got shut off valves pretty much everywhere anyhow so supply and return around this old furnace or the forced air furnace then we come down to the plate exchanger this is where the business happens we've got a 40 plate exchanger 40 plate heat exchanger so you've got metal plates stacked on top of each other and then water from the house 
boiler system goes through one stack of plates and they alternate you know so then the water from the outdoor wood boiler goes through the other plates it's a pretty heavy duty unit that that uh, plate exchanger back there I made a wall bracket and mounted it to the wall I broke the supply line from the return side of the LP boiler broke it right about let me see if I can get a pointer here we go so I actually broke in a couple places but we started up here I cut it up here and I cut it down here so that I could get a T in under this insulation so I could get a T in here all right so this is all inch and a quarter and then I pumped one inch so inch and a quarter down to a one inch T because the plate exchanger is one inch NPT so dielectric couplers with high temp gaskets in them so we've got our supply line coming back from the rest of the house I got a valve in line so that I can force it into the plate exchanger it goes into the plate exchanger this is the the inlet side so the cool re water returning from the house enters into there and comes out down here comes back through and then gets fed into the boiler the and they crit uh, just like the barn they crisscross the supply the cool water supply coming back from the house or the zones within the house goes in up here and the hot water coming from the boiler enters from down here so they basically cross paths going through the different plates in the plate exchanger I was afraid or at least I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to be able to heat the water in the boiler uh, without the pump running you know when the zones aren't on nothing's moving so I wasn't sure if that was actually going to or if the, the plate exchanger was going to be able to heat the water in the, the uh, slant fin boiler here uh, but it does this uh, uh, thermal cycling and it actually heats it up fantastic I was I thought I might have to actually uh, plumb in a, a, a like basically a seventh loop going from the inlet and the discharge of the slant fin in order to get the hot water from the boiler to circulate through even when nothing's calling for heat when nothing's calling for heat this circulator pump isn't even running but it did it it actually just heat cycles or thermal cycles somehow or another I'm, I'm not a professional I don't know the thermal dynamics behind it but it actually worked great I didn't have to do any of that and I kept the boiler off I never fired the the boiler I didn't even turn the pilot light on so this entire winter the system just ran and it worked beautifully <clears throat> if I wanted to run just the boiler I could just open this valve here and it would allow the normal flow from the uh, return side come down straight through it would completely bypass I mean I'm sure some of it would trickle through the plate the plate exchanger but most of it would just go right through this ball valve here and straight through if I wanted to run this boiler but that would defeat the whole purpose because running this boiler cost me close to seven call it eight hundred dollars a month in propane and that's kind of why I'm installing or why I did install the out outdoor wood boiler all right uh, what else so overall it is a fairly simple install a big shout out to alternative heating and supply their YouTube channel he did a dry erase board outline of basically this uh, and that's what I base this off of and he does go over a few other things here and there and like I said the the secondary circular circulator pump uh, if you have issues um, and you can read up more about that with them I just wanted to show the actual plumbing and what it looks like once it's installed 
So coming out of the ground into the house, however you decide to run it. And then a plate exchanger, and you'll have to get with the pros. I talked to at least to two different sales companies and a local company about the size of the plate exchanger I needed for my house. And I settled on a 40 plate exchanger. Obviously everybody's plumbing is a little bit different for their actual boiler setups. But this worked great all winter long, not a single issue. Um, that one single Taco pump was able to supply the whole house when needed. And yeah, it was fantastic. So hopefully this helps out somebody. If it did, please shoot me a, a like. And uh, if you got any questions, I'd be more than happy to go in more detail in any, any of these other parts or pieces. Um, some of this stuff ain't cheap. You know, doing the initial setup here, these plate exchangers, especially this 40 plate, I think it was close to 300 bucks. You know, like 250 to $300 just for the plate exchanger. So the initial setup, like anything, is not cheap. Um, but considering it's saving me, you know, seven to eight hundred dollars a month in uh, propane to have the boiler system working in the house. Uh, the previous couple winters, we were just using the forest air, which saves us on propane, but it doesn't heat our basement. And it's certainly not as nice of a heat throughout the house as the boiler system. Every room in this house has radiant baseboard heat. And when it's running, it's great. But it is so doggone expensive. So we're pretty happy with it. I'm really happy with it. Um, it's tedious. It takes a while. You know, I'm going to have to um, tighten these up, put some new um, pipe dope on them. I fixed one already. It started leaking as soon as I started filling the system. So I was able to stop, blow out the lines, uh, redo that fitting, and it worked. And then the second one here, the return line, didn't start leaking until a month later, which is what the pan is for down here. And it was just like a, a couple drips an hour. Just enough to be irritating, but nothing that uh, overflowed. So I'll fix that this summer. Um, put in valves. Put in lots and lots of valves. So you can always valve everything off if you need to work on something. And other than that, if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. I'll be more than happy to let you know anything that I know. Again, I'm not a professional. I'm just a guy working on his homestead. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, keep uh, keep tuned. We're going to be doing a, a few more boiler videos on how I got all this set, uh, stuff set up and got it running. Uh, I always seem to run into these uh, unique situations. You know, everybody puts their boiler uh, heat exchangers in the air ducts, and that's great. It works for most people, but since I already had a boiler system in the house, I wanted to use the boiler system, and they're just not nearly as much information. I run into this all the time, which is honestly why I started a YouTube channel. I want to be able to share these experiences and what I learned and how to do it. Because uh, it took me months to get all of this nailed down, including, you know, in, between in here and in the barn. Uh, that's all I got for you today. Have a good one. May the fourth be with you. Bye.